for judicial interpretation. According to the speaker, this is their opinion on the matter. We have to wait to hear what the executive thinks of that opinion. Our next report looks at the gruesome killings of 40 people in Sokoto State by armed bandits. In recent times, hardly a day goes by in the National Assembly without the mention of killings. This week, lawmakers in the Senate observed a minute silence for yet another set of gruesome killings, this time in Sokoto State. The Senate notes with sadness the corruption and unprecedented killing of innocent and defenseless people in the, in the number of 40 in Sokoto State by armed bandits on Monday morning at Dogonyaru in the district in the local government area of Kirby State. The Senate was concerned that these armed bandits are operating in the first forest where they carry nefarious and barbaric killing of innocent people over a period of two years. The Senate further notes that they move with motorcycles that carry up to three people, numbering about 30 motorcycles in all, meaning that the armed bandits were up to 90, and each one of them is carrying AK-47 rifle. One after the other, the senators took turns to react. This is a very serious issue, and currently I think we have over five villages that left the whole place. They have their camp now in a place called Gandhi. So this is a very serious issue. I think something has to be done. Government has to take this thing very seriously. And the way I think is that there is need to have maybe uh, a depot of the army to be somewhere within that forest so that they can carve out all the manners of those bandits and then make sure the place is totally secured. Today, what is happening in Zavarana, it has touched Sokoto, and if care is not taken, it will touch Kebi. From Kebi, it will come to Kaduna, and from Kaduna, it will come to Abuja. Even the recent killings that happened, the recent, uh, recent one that happened in uh, Abuja here, where seven policemen were killed, there is a lot of intelligence. It's not armed robbers that kill those people. They are this same armed bandit they are trying to regroup and come to Abuja and start operating in Abuja. But today, if you look at the security situation in the country, the security men, they are more interested in politics than securing the lives and properties of the ordinary citizens of Nigeria. Uh, there is no way, if we don't ask questions, if we don't do the right thing, this thing will continue. I don't believe in saying that we should not do certain things because the presidency or the villa will not act. I don't believe it. We should do our own work. Let's push it to them. If they do it, fine. If they don't do it, we are, we are sure that we have done our own. They maintain their stand that the solution to the killings is the creation of state police. And to drive home their point, a bill to amend the Nigerian constitution and allow for the establishment of state police is presented in the Senate. To make provision for state and community policy. So the committee has fulfilled its um, mandate, and uh, now the bill is, has, taken, has been taken for the first time. And I'm sure that as soon as possible, we'll take the second reading, and then I'll probably send it to the public hearing through the committee as well, so that we'll fast track it as directed by the Senate. The killings in Sokoto State also elicited reactions from members of the House of Representatives. One of the lawmakers from Sokoto State narrated the incident. Concerned that if urgent security measures are not moved in, uh, put in place to cope this dastardly act, the people will be continuously exposed to unimaginable danger. Worried that inhabitants of the affected villages and the surroundings are now living in perpetual fear of further attacks occurring, and as a result, the socio-economic life of the people has been adversely affected with the attendant humanitarian crisis. The motion enjoyed the full support of lawmakers. The armed bandits were going and they sent a notice. They gave letters of warning that they were coming over. After giving such notice and nothing was done, the next day they were there to massacre. As far as I'm concerned, that was massacre, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. 
And what is the security, or what are the security agencies doing when we know that Zamfara has been the hotspot for the last couple of years? So why don't you take measures? Because you know it's a matter of time as they are moving, you take measures. If we here have done our job well, so that we can tell our children, because there's one thing to speak out, and there's another thing to keep quiet. I and many members here will not keep quiet. We must say the truth, and whoever feels he is offended, we don't care. We think about the future so that we can tell our children that we spoke out when injustice was meted out on the people of Nigeria. Mr. Our country is being invaded by people we do not know. And Mr. Speaker, it means that as parliament, we should start to realize that it is business unusual. Both chambers resolved to urge the federal government to mandate the Air Force and Police Helicopter Divisions to carry out aerial surveillance in Sokoto, Zamfara and Kebi State to identify the locations and hideouts of the bandits, while urging the Inspector General of Police to set up a special squad to get rid of the bandits. In addition, the House of Representatives also resolved to set up a committee to conduct an audit to identify the country's exact security manpower.